Growing up, I'm sure some of us saw this show called That Incredible. It was a show that showcases daredevils performing various stunts, sometimes inside the studio and sometimes filmed on location. However, much like our previous list, today's daredevils weren't so lucky. From a guy who thought it was smart to try something he saw on YouTube to the tragic demise of America's very first daredevil, here are 10 daredevils who lost their lives doing stunts. Number 10. Kyle Lee Many daredevils, in fact, probably all of them at this point, give a standard warning every time they do stunts, and that's for people not to try whatever they're doing at home. You see it on many places, like Jackass, as well as just general daredevil stuff. The warning does work, for the most part, and honestly has probably saved a lot of would-be daredevils from imminent and even fatal harm. It doesn't always work, though. In March 2013, Kyle Lee Stalking attempted to duplicate a feat he saw on YouTube. If the stunt had gone as planned, the 22-year-old would have swung beneath the 110-foot corona arch near Moab, Utah, after jumping off the top. However, he misjudged the length of the rope he was using, and instead of swinging, he struck the ground, killing him on impact. Number 9. Selendra Nathroy This part-time daredevil did a lot of crazy stunts with his hair, including pulling a narrow-gauge train with his ponytail, which he claimed to keep strong with mustard oil. But of course, we're not here to talk about his hair care regimen. We are, however, going to talk about the last hair-centric stunt that he did, which was going down a zipline using his own hair. He's done the stunt before. In fact, he actually held the Guinness record for farthest distance on a zipline using his hair. However, during his final performance, the 48-year-old's heart wasn't up for the stress of the stunt. Spectators witnessed the Daredevil stop midway through the zipline around 300 feet down. He struggled for close to 30 minutes, shouting for help, but there were no emergency personnel on hand and no one would understand what he was saying. At the end of the half hour, he became still. When paramedics finally cut him down, he was already dead, apparently dying of a heart attack. Number 8. Audrey Mester Freediving is an exciting, albeit extremely dangerous sport. I mean, diving in full scuba gear is already dangerous enough, but can you imagine doing so yourself armed with only a set of flippers and goggles? Well, a lot of people seem to love freediving, though. Enough to risk their own lives, as according to ABC News, roughly 2% of the freediving population dies every year. That's about 100 deaths per 5,000 divers, mind you. Audrey Mester was one of those people. The freediving champion set out to break the No Limits Dive World Record of 531.5 feet. Everything went swimmingly, uh, no pun intended, so to speak. It all went really well on the way down, however, swimming back up was the problem. According to the Miami Herald, her cause of death was equipment failure. In No Limits Freediving, an air tank fills a balloon, which helps the diver get quickly back to the surface. However, Messer's air tank didn't have enough air to inflate said balloon. The International Association of Free Divers gave Mester a posthumous honor for the practice dive she'd completed a few days earlier, about 558 feet, which was only about three feet short of the dive that killed her. Number 7. Matt Cranch The Human Cannonball is one of the oldest stunts in the Daredevil's handybook. The very first Human Cannonball took to the air in 1872, launching the careers of a long, distinguished line of people who ultimately died in the line of duty. Broken limbs, broken backs, and broken heads are all just part and parcel, but that didn't stop Matt Cranch from giving it a go. Back in 2011, Cranch was about to perform as a human cannonball for the first time in front of hundreds of people in Kent, England. He was supposed to land safely on a safety net after being launched 40 feet into the air. The launch itself was fine, however his neck collapsed upon him landing on it. He hit head first and died from his injuries. An inquest later found that the quick-release mechanism on the safety net hadn't been set properly. Cranch was a former mechanic who had been on the stunt team for about a month at the time of his death, and had practiced the stunt a total of five times and walked away unscathed. It's tragic that this happened, but also not unexpected. Number 6. Todd Green Extreme sports wouldn't be called extreme if they weren't partly terrifying and partly insane. Wing walking is an extreme sport, but it surpasses the sort of insane level and is cozily ensconced completely and utterly insane. Needless to say, it's extremely dangerous. A fact that was demonstrated back in 2011. This is when wing walker Todd Green was performing at Selfridge Air Show in Michigan and fell 150 feet to his death. He was trying to transfer from a wing to a plane to the skid of a helicopter in midair. Green's stunt was one of the biggest attractions of the show, and a lot of spectators initially believed the fall was part of the act which seems to be a common misconception when daredevils die during performances. 
It wasn't until the show's announcers told the crowd something had gone wrong that they finally learned the truth. Number 5. Kirk Jones There's something about Niagara Falls that inspires daredevils, and that's despite the fact that the ratio of survived to didn't survive is roughly 3 to 1. 22 people have tried to go over the falls as of writing, with only 16 of them living to tell the tale. Heck, authorities didn't even know that some of these attempts were made, only finding out when discovering the grisly aftermath. Kirk Jones was one of these people who made a virtually unannounced attempt. His body was found below on the falls on June 2, 2017, and police investigators later found a website called Kirk Jones Niagara Falls Daredevil. On this website is published the words, Believe in the Impossible, Kirk Jones and Misty Conquer Niagara Falls, New York 2017. Oh, by the way, Misty Conquer was Jones' pet boa constrictor who authorities believe also did not survive the fall. This is one of the entries I want to get really sarcastic about, but no, I'm not going to just for you. Authorities believe that Jones planned to go over the falls inside a big inflatable ball, as some tourists were said to have witnessed an inflatable ball going over the falls sometime in April 2017, which if true, meant that Jones' lifeless body had been bobbing around in the water for nearly three months. Number 4. Janika Basnayake Humans, as well as other living things for this matter, need water, food, and most importantly, air in order to live. That's why the Buried Alive act is one of the most dangerous stunts magicians can actually attempt. In fact, most magicians won't do this act outside a controlled environment. That's why many found it puzzling, not to mention reckless, that 24-year-old Janika Basnayake from Sri Lanka made an attempt to beat the world record for longest time buried alive. It certainly was puzzling and reckless because Janika was a complete novice. Instead of having a team or safety experts by his side, on March 5, 2012, he got his family to bury him into a 10-foot deep pit and then cover it with soil and wood. He was left buried for a good seven entire hours before his family dug him up. What they found was an unconscious Janaka who was also not breathing. He was taken to the hospital but was pronounced dead on arrival. The sad thing is, this world record attempt or any of its kind isn't even being recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records, deeming it far too dangerous to attempt. Number 3. Mohammed Jalaluddin Enter Mohammed, a 19-year-old man from Hyderabad, India, who poured kerosene on himself and then set himself on fire. Ooh, trying to be nice. No, it's not him taking his own life in the most visceral way possible. He was actually recording an audition video for a program called India's Got Talent. In the first part of the stunt, he did a couple of fire-breathing tricks and then attempted to light his shirt on fire. Unfortunately, the fire raged out of control before Jalaluddin had a chance to remove his shirt. His crew were simply a bunch of neighborhood kids who ran away when things went south, leaving no one to help out the blaze. Jalaluddin suffered burns over 60% of his body, and he died three days later in a hospital. While I am trying to be nice for a lot of these people, as for a good majority of the list, most of these weren't their fault, there's still quite a few on here that I just really am not a fan of. Now it's time for the day's best pick. This comes to us from a subscriber, so if you come across something strange online and want to know more about it, send it on over to us and we'll look into it for you. Who knows, we might even feature it in a future video. Number 2. Wu Yongning Wu Yongning called himself China's first rooftopper, and he actually probably was. He was a martial arts trained stuntman, but he was most famous for performing stunts without safety equipment on top of skyscrapers. You can probably see how the rest of this one's going. In 2017, Wu was performing on top of the 62-story Huiyan International Center in Changsha, China, when he slipped and fell to his death. No one knew how he climbed to the top, as only 44 floors of the building were open to the public. In his defense, he did have tons of experience as a stuntman and had completed similar feats hundreds of times and at the same time making the equivalent of thousands of dollars from the videos he shot of himself performing. The stunt that ultimately killed him was reportedly worth 100,000 yuan, or about $15,000, which was believed to be put up by one of China's major news companies. His step-uncle told the media that Wu needed the cash for his mother's medical expenses and for his wedding. In fact, he planned to propose to his girlfriend the day after his death, which apparently did not come to fruition. Before we move on, do me a favor. My analytics show that only about 15% of you watching are actually subscribed. Come on guys, what's up with that? Can you guys please hit the subscribe button? You guys watch my videos every day anyway, so you might as well subscribe and keep up to date with every video we put out. Number 1. Sam Patch Sam Patch is widely considered to be America's first daredevil, a title that he richly deserves. 
After all, he survived jumping over Niagara Falls not once, but twice. Being a showman, he knew that he was only as good as his last stunt, so he always tried to do better things, or think of ways to up the ante. After Niagara became boring and passe, Patch decided to leave from the High Falls and the Genesee River, which granted was not quite as up as the 125-foot platform he jumped from at Niagara, but it would at least bring in a new audience. And just to make the spectacle even more tempting, he promised to push a bear into the water first. For some reason. Somewhere between 6,000 and 8,000 cash-bearing people showed up to watch and everything went great. However, Patch wanted more. Specifically, he wanted more cash. So we scheduled a second jump, but this time something happened mid-descent. Spectators said he drooped and then hit the water looking more like a marionette than a living person. And that was Sam Patch's last jump. Would you be daring enough to try any of these stunts? Let us know down below in the comments. Also, make sure to check out the channel's other amazing content. As always, thank you all for watching, and I look forward to your angry comments about this video below. Later, everybody.